I blew up the motor on my 18 volt cordless drill. For anyone interested, it's a work zone brand from Aldi. Getting to it is pretty simple. Just a bunch of Phillips head screws and the case comes off. A quick touch with the soldering iron disconnects the wires and then a small twist and the motor separates from the gearbox. I grabbed a replacement motor from eBay for about $18. It's called an RS550 and it's the same motor used in nearly every cordless drill. I swapped over the gearbox mount and soldered the new motor in. Pop it all back together and it works. If you're really strapped for cash, you can buy a replacement brush set for about $2.50. Bend back the pinches with a pair of pliers or a punch and pull the back of the motor off. You can see what happened to the brushes here. I'll clean off the commutator with some 400 grit sandpaper. Pop the new brush set in place. I'm using two nails to separate the springs. Here I'm clamping the old motor in a vise using a piece of wood that I drilled a hole in and then cut in half. And a drop of oil on each end of the motor and it works perfectly. Handy to keep as a spare. Whilst I'm at it, I also decided to upgrade the chuck. This is a ROM keyless chuck. I think I paid about $30 for it, but they're currently about $75 online. This is a really simple upgrade that I'd recommend for any cheap cordless drill. First, remove the left hand locking screw. Remember, righty loosey. Then unscrew the chuck with a normal thread. If it's a bit stuck, lock the chuck onto a hex in an impact driver and spin them in the opposite direction from each other. You can then put the new chuck on. It works really nicely. This is a 10mm high speed steel drill bit going into about half inch of steel. The drill repair was a couple of months ago and during that time this happened. The thrust bearings got pulverised and the ring clip holding the shaft in the gearbox let go. I ordered some replacement 2mm bearings and some replacement rings. I measured the inside diameter of the old ring, which was 7mm, figuring that that was the only critical dimension, but that's obviously not right. The outside diameter is 9mm, but they only come in 8 or 10. For the moment I'll reuse the old clip, and I'll pin a comment once I receive the new ones to let you know what size it actually is. I'll pull it apart quickly and replace the bearings, and go into a bit more detail about how the gearbox works once it's apart. A 
I figured it might be a good idea to run through what all the parts of the gearbox actually do. Obviously we've got the arbor, which is the bit that we just put in that goes all the way through and that holds onto the chuck and that has the uh, bearing which takes the drilling load. Here we've got the clutch plate. So this is all the numbered pieces that you find on the end of the drill. And what happens here is it has these slots that hook onto these tangs and these go up this very coarse thread which compress and decompress this spring which pushes on this plate which then pushes on the ball bearings down in the bottom. Those ball bearings then in turn press onto this piece with these little ramps and obviously the harder those press in because of the spring tension the harder it'll be for them to slip up on the ramp. So when it's really tight it means that the gearbox is transmitting all the power into the chuck and when they're loose they'll slip which gives that sound. Next part we have is this little star pattern in the plastic housing. That engages with this piece which in turn engages with this piece. Now you can see here the arbor slips through here so this is the final drive into the chuck and then there's these little cylindrical bearings and what this actually is what's known as a sprag clutch so when the outer part rotates the inner parts free to rotate however if you try and rotate the inner part it'll twist and you can see when it twists it forces these bearings ever so slightly out and that makes them catch in this so it actually makes it so that the motor can turn the chuck but the chuck can't back turn the motor on the other side of this set piece we have our first planetary gear set so this is our five gears and that engages the part that we showed earlier that goes into the um, clutch for the torque settings one last piece before we move on is this little bit and all that does is engages with these little notches around the edge so that it actually positively locks into position on each of the clutch settings. This is stage one, or I guess technically the last stage of the gearbox because we're doing it in reverse. And then we just have a backing plate which is held in place by these two pins which go through the sides. As you saw when I took them out, they're not particularly strong in, in there and it's just to hold the stages separate from each other. The next piece after that is another planetary gear set. So the sun gear of this goes into the planets of the first one and then the other side is another planetary gear set. From there we have yet another planetary gear set where the, so the sun from the new one goes into the planets of the one we just mentioned. And then there's another planetary gear set on here. This is where the two speed reduction comes in. This is the two speed reducer. It has this part which extends to the edge of the gearbox which slots into this which allows it to move. This part is operated by your two speed lever and that slots in over here. This locks into here through the holes in the case and it selects either the ring gear directly or the planets on the next level up and then in turn that changes the speed of the gearbox. Finally we have the final ring gear which goes on to the last reduction stage and these lock it into the case and there's a backing plate that put that locks everything in together and then the final step to the puzzle is the sun gear from the motor plugs into the final set of planets. So you might be thinking to yourself, how the hell did you do that to the bearing? And it was exactly the same way that I blew out the motor. 
it was this a 25 mil forcing bit running through some very old hardwood uh, when I blew out the motor I was just absolutely reaping on it trying to push as hard as I could it started to smoke I knew it was on its way out anyway so I just kept going and it just completely blew up the bearing was a bit different what happened was I was going through and then I was pulling it out and it actually got a little bit stuck on the edges and I think that uh, circlet or the little round clip that was in there just pulled off. Obviously the bearings were on the way out though because they were completely pulverized. I'm not sure if I hadn't have pulled whether it would have had much longer anyway but that was that was how it died. Either way it was a pretty cheap repair in the end so I'll still probably just abuse it the same way that I have been. After all, it's a tool, it's made to be used, and if it can't do the jobs that I want it to do, then it's not really worth having.